I thought about starting off this video by singing to you. You know that song by Randy Travis, the song that Randy Travis sang, I'm gonna love you forever and ever, forever and ever, amen. But I stopped and thought about it, and I said, number one, I can't sing. Certainly not as well as Randy Travis, and number two, there's this copyright issue, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say this. That's not the thinking of a narcissist. I'm going to love you forever and ever, forever and ever. Amen. But that's what they say. I mean, that's that's how they come across at the very onset, at the very beginning. You know, uh, they, they may say it explicitly, they may say it implicitly, but they give you the idea, they give you the thought that they got your back and they're going to be in your life forever as your best friend or as your dear, true lover. This is somebody that, if it's a love thing, you know, uh, this is the ideal candidate to get married. At least that's the thought they are getting across. So yeah, they'll sing that song, but they're not sincere. They're disingenuous. They're, okay, they're lying. What What is the narcissist then? One out of you. He doesn't want to love you. He doesn't want to be your best friend. He doesn't want any of that. He just wants you to think that, uh, well, to confide in him, uh, to trust him. That's what he wants more than anything else. But that's a means to an end. The end is, and I think you already know this, but the, the, the end is he wants to devalue you because in so doing, somehow the narcissist lifts himself or herself up that boosts his or her ego. That's how these people obtain a sense of self-worth. And as I said in the, uh, an earlier video I made today, is that, uh, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we already talked about it, but most narcissists, they're really... Uh, you know, they're, they're not the bad people they think they are, but they think they're bad people. They have this self-esteem deficit in their mind, but really they have the same value as everyone else. They just don't recognize it. So to compensate for that, uh, that uh, deficit, which doesn't even exist, they try to take it from you. They are actually jealous of people. If a narcissist attacked you, he did it for several reasons or attached I call it attachment, attackment. The reason they do that is because, number one, they saw value in you. Well, nice compliment, but, you know, there's better ways to say it than take advantage of people, right? So they value you because you have more value than they do, and they want to take it from you. They want to transfer it from, them, from you to them. You have worth, and they're thinking you have worth, and they don't. Where, in reality, you have worth, and they have worth. They just don't recognize their own worth. So they try to transfer it from you to themselves. So what what exactly is going on here? Well, it's all about affirmation. They want to affirm themselves. They want to they want to acquire that sense of worth. They want to acquire value. They want to acquire self esteem. And the way to do that is to take it from you. Well, how do they do that? They do it by devaluing you. They will criticize you. They will sometimes literally flat out steal from you. Talk about that in just a second. But they will do anything they can. They'll smear you. The, the lower you get, the higher the narcissist feels. The boost his, we call that supply, by the way. He is boosting, he is inflating his ego to the point where it's about to bust. I mean, sometimes these people, I don't know how they do it, but their entire lives, most of them are just a mess. Now, every narcissist that I've gotten close to, and I've known some narcissists or people with controlling personalities or narcissistic personalities, and I really didn't get close enough to them for them to take advantage of me in this way, but sometimes they just flat out steal. I mean, literally steal money from you. Sometimes thousands of dollars. Now, you may ask, how do I know that? Well, been there, done that. Something we need to understand is one of the reasons that I make these videos is because, you know, push at 70 years old, I've been through this. Uh, I empathize with you. I understand what you're going through. And I'm assuming that you are empathizing with me. You know what I went through. And so together we can sit down and we can talk about it. Nice thing to have YouTube where we can actually bring these things out in the open and you and I sit down together and we have a nice chat. So uh, they will take whatever they can take from you. They will take your sense of self-worth. They will take your friends. They will take your, um, sometimes their livelihood. I mean, literally, though, wherever you work, you know, they'll go in and complain to the supervisor. Why? But they will pretend that you hurt them somehow, some way, if it's, you know, particularly if it's in a retail environment. 
they'll go and file a complaint against something that you did. I mean, literally, they take away your livelihood. But sometimes when the opportunity presents itself, they flat out steal from you. They'll Sometimes they'll borrow things knowing they're not going to bring it back. Other times, if they have access to your resources, they will take that also. Well, you know, I've had narcissists in my life, excuse me for being so stupid and so naive and so gullible, but I've had narcissists in my life who would borrow money. I felt sorry for him. This is my friend. This is my buddy. You know, he convinced me. He's going to love me forever and ever. Amen. Not love, but, you know, friendship talking about. And um, I, 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 I swallowed it. You know, I believed it. And, you know, this is my buddy. He's got my back, so I'm going to have his back. He needs a $100 loan. Okay, here we go. Doesn't get paid back. What's that? Need another $100? Okay, well, you know, um, I have a successful business. I can handle this. Here you go. He doesn't pay me back. Let's do this business together, and you buy this, and I will sell it, the narcissist says, and we'll split it even, you know, the profits 50-50, and so you you know, you test it out a little bit, and he takes the product, he sells it, and he keeps the proceeds. Well, how many times can a narcissist do this before you catch on? And in my experience, uh, way too many times. Uh, I just surprised myself. Oh, actually, gullible I have been. Okay. Now, we said all that to say this, that the narcissist goal for you, the reason you are in his or her life, is they view you as someone they can take advantage of. And they do it. You know, they don't love you at all. Not, certainly not forever and ever, but they don't love you ever. That's pretty much it. So, what, what, why do they take advantage of you? Well, there's something about you and your character that they liked. Number one is you have value, and they don't, or they do, but they don't recognize they have value. They don't recognize they have worth. They feel worthless, so they want to feel like they, they, they have worth, and so they you know, take it from you by devaluing you, by humiliating you, by stealing from you, by slandering you. Anything they can do to put you down makes them feel better. You understand how that works, but there's something else they saw in you, probably. And that is you have, are you listening? Because this, my friend, is really important. What they saw in you probably was you have the heart of a servant. You are a helper. You are a person that if you see, you ever been driving down the road and you see a perfect stranger and it's raining out and this guy, you're driving and he's walking and you feel like, uh, I need to pick this guy up, you know? Have you ever seen somebody drop something and your instinct is to pick it up and help them? Somebody trip and fall, you don't stop and ponder it, uh, you just go over and help them. You have a servant's heart. Maybe you have a neighbor that needs some help and the first thing you think is, I need to help this person out. You have a servant's heart. That's the type of person. And by the way, that's a good thing. But the narcissist um, observes and he's watching. And so he pretends to be the person who needs help. Since you have a servant's heart, what are you going to do? Yeah, right. You're going to help him. Correct? You're going to do whatever you can to help this person because that is your nature. And the narcissist understands that is your nature. Another thing a narcissist does because they feel entitled is uh, they want you to meet their needs. And because these people tend to be... Um, I don't want to say they're lazy because some of them do work. But they don't like to uh, they don't like to hold down jobs because they don't like to be supervised. They don't want anyone telling them what to do. Give them a job. Some of them are lazy, but some of them, yeah, they can do the job. They just don't want to because they don't want somebody telling them what to do. And because of that, they don't have a job. They they don't have income. So what do they do for resources? Uh, they take advantage of. Well, you're a helper. Remember, you're a servant. They need to ride somewhere. I knew a guy that uh, I'm pretty sure was a full-blown narcissist, uh, certainly had narcissistic tendencies, and he, he didn't have a driver's license. I mean, this is a guy, man, in his 50s, I think. The reason he didn't have a driver's license, from what I heard, was uh, he was sued because he owed somebody some money and he didn't show up at court, and so the judge took away his driver's license. And he still didn't show up at court, so he just lived his life, you know, no one's telling him what to do. He's above the law. So he just walks everywhere. And uh, then he stopped walking everywhere, and he started borrowing cars and driving without a license. I know that because he got stopped once, and it was public record. But um, they need a ride. 
So who do they call? They call you, or in this case, called me. And yeah, I don't know how many times I've given this guy rides to, you know, one time to do his laundry, you know, one time to go see somebody. This particular individual, a little bit off topic, but he had this weird obsession with looking at real estate. I mean, he over the years, he looked at hundreds, I suppose, hundreds and hundreds of different properties. He could not buy them. He didn't have two nickels to rub together. Why did he do that? Well, I think that maybe I'm going to do a video on demonology and narcissism. Whether or not you believe in demons is 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 irrelative because there is, some people say, yeah, they have demons, and other people would say, no, there's no such thing as demons, but, you know, the whole idea of demons is based on narcissists, so they do it backwards, but either way, the connection is there, so we may do a video on that, whether you believe in demons or not, you'll find that interesting, but, um, yeah, they're always looking for real estate, always looking for property, like the angels who were kicked out of heaven, the story goes, and they are forever haunting houses, go from house to house. They're always possessing people, going from person to person. Was that what this guy was doing? You know, looking from house to house, look at, well, he does that. You know, he lives in one guy's basement, lives in someone else's spare bedroom, never pays his rent. Uh, uh, he'll rent a trailer, an apartment, whatever, but he won't pay his rent. And that's one of the reasons he was taken to court so many times, is uh, being evicted. So they want you to meet their needs because they feel entitled. They see you. That's how they view you as a resource. Nothing more. You're not a friend. You're not a lover. You're a resource. You exist to support them. They're almost like children, right? Uh, it's like, you know, they got stuck at age 11 and the whole world is supposed to support them because, well, they're little orphans and that's your job. Well, there's one other thing we need to keep in mind that the narcissist will do to you and one of the ways they view you, and we talked about this in the last video that we just did, and that is they see you as expendable. That is to say that uh, when they are done with you, they are going to throw you away. They're going to toss you aside as if uh, you never existed. They got what they needed to get out of you, and they see that now you're on to them. They can't take anything else, so... The next thing they're going to do is trash talk you. You know all about the smear campaign, but you got to keep in mind, how does the narcissist view you? Let's summarize it in two words. Number one, they see you as a temporary asset. And number two, they view you as expendable. So if you can get those two concepts, then you understand what a narcissist is all about and how they view you. Once again, they view you as a temporary asset and they view you as totally expendable. Two rectangles on the screen, that means we can keep on talking, keep hanging out if you want to. I just click one of those two rectangles. If not, well, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll see you all next time.